based on invention, an opportunity to discover whole new worlds. And old inventions are sometimes more fun than new ones. I felt like I was going to die, and, uh, and I swore I would never get on it again. These and more stories coming up on Invention. Greetings from the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. I'm Lucky Severson. We have always been fascinated by the stuff out there in the universe. Some people even make life decisions based on the configuration of the constellations. Galileo was a little more rational. He took out a telescope, looked up at the sky, and saw planets revolving around the sun. But that was only the beginning. Ever since then, we've been figuring out ways to peer further and further into outer space. The story now from Roger Kennedy. This 1830s English telescope is a more sophisticated version of Galileo's. It's called a reflecting telescope. The light comes in this end and is concentrated so you can see things the naked eye can't. With a telescope like this, you can see tens of millions of light years into space. Astronomers use big reflecting telescopes with curved mirrors. They collect light and reflect it into an instrument. The astronomer can peer 12 to 15 billion light years into space. Now, astronomers have developed a new kind of mirror telescope that lets them look even further. Who knows? Maybe to the edge of the universe. Mark Sumner commutes to work. Well, it can be a dangerous road. It's, uh, it's dirt, there are no guardrails or steep drop-offs. So uh, one has to be careful. He begins his day with a drive up into the clouds, past the tree line, through fields of lava cinders as big as houses, up the side of a volcano, to a place three miles high in the thin, cold air. Astronomers, scientists, were drawn to this mountain by its unusually clear view of the night sky. Telescopes and their protective domes pop up on this mountain like mushrooms after a rain. Sumner works on the newest installation on top of Mauna Kea on the big island of Hawaii. The Keck telescope is already the world's largest functioning telescope and it's only a quarter of what it will be. Inside the dome, a big change in telescope building has taken place, led by Jerry Nelson. The thing I worked on for was how do we build a big telescope? Big telescopes have mirrors that are slightly concave, like a satellite dish. Just as those antennas collect and concentrate signals, the astronomer's mirror collects and concentrates starlight. The bigger the mirror, the more a telescope can see. For decades, America's biggest mirror and the biggest piece of glass was in the telescope on Palomar Mountain in Southern California. It was nearly 17 feet across. Jerry Nelson wanted a bigger one. The Palomar 200-inch telescope was completed in the late 1940s. And so here we were at this time in 1977, some 30 years later, realizing that nobody had ever built any larger telescopes. The reasons, simple mechanics. Even with a honeycomb pattern on the back of the glass disc to save weight, the Palomar mirror weighs 15 tons. A bigger piece of glass would sag under its own weight, ruining the ability of the mirror to focus. I realized we couldn't just build a bigger piece of glass. The obvious alternative is that you make it up out of pieces. Nelson's idea was to join together 36 hexagonal mirrors, each six feet across, to function as a single giant mirror, 33 feet wide. The mirror segments could then be lightweight and rigid. Each of the 36 pieces of glass had to be ground into shape, so they'd fit together in precisely the right curve. When you look locally at the surface, it looks greatly magnified, a little bit like a potato chip. Again, Nelson and his team came up with a radically new idea. They fitted the mirrors with sensors and pistons. Twice a second, a computer checks the position of each segment and nudges it into place. At the time, there was a good deal of resistance to the ideas that we were proposing. 
There was a view that they were too radical, that the risks were too large. We built a quarter scale segmented mirror. We showed the results to others and they said, all right, I'm impressed you did it. I see that the technique works. We don't need to argue about that anymore. The Keck telescope is an engineering masterpiece. The 250 ton machine is so precisely balanced, it can be moved by hand. In fact, and it's, it's really a wonderful thing to do, when the telescope is at the horizon, you can simply grab onto the top end of the telescope and lean on it and move the whole telescope just by leaning against it. Now, the Keck Foundation has contributed another $75 million to build a second telescope at the other end of the support building. The two will work together as a super scope. And together, the machines on the mountain will look for other worlds, study the forces that shape galaxies, search for the signs of how the universe began. They will tell us things we didn't even know we didn't know. Fifty years from now, I suspect that this telescope will be noted for answering questions and asking questions that we can't talk about today because we're too ignorant. Coming up next, virtual audio on Next Step. Passat Touring Sedan. Now at special lease rates at your Volkswagen retailer. Power. Stealth. Cunning. To survive in the wild, you don't follow the rules. You make them. Join host Anthony Hopkins as he guides you through a savage world where death is a way of life. Don't miss the U.S. television premiere of Killing for a Living. Premiering tonight at 10 Eastern and Pacific, only on the Discovery Channel. There was a time when survival itself was so terrifying, most homo sapiens found their greatest pleasure in simply feeling safe and secure. But for most of us, not anymore. People are now spending millions, maybe billions, looking for thrills, searching for the most terrifying experience they can find. Rock climbing, skydiving, bungee cord jumping, whitewater rafting, searching high and low for that ultimate, most terrifying roller coaster ride. <laughs> Space age high tech steel coasters that many enthusiasts consider the ultimate ride. It's an old, dilapidated wooden one built in 1927. It's a long ways up. I'm looking for broken trikes. I don't see nothing yet that I have to replace. Every morning on the days the cyclone is open, Director of Maintenance Walter Williams can be found walking these tracks, inspecting beams, looking for loose nails, checking out cracks. Yeah, this here step here seemed to be a little loose. Better put a nail in it. Okay, that's better. In the past five years, Williams has virtually rebuilt the entire 3,000-foot coaster inch by inch, plank by plank. Because I make sure that 
It is safe to ride every day. That is my job. That's why I be here every day to walk it, to check it. I think I got it all. I think we're going to have a good day today. Fifteen million people have ridden the cyclone. As one reporter noted, the cyclone is as valuable to New York City as a Statue of Liberty or Empire State Building. A lot of people come on here, streaming, waving, cheering. Sometimes they be crying when they get off. I guess that's the thrill they get out of it. The cars are pulled by a chain belt to the top of the first hill. After that, gravity keeps them going. There's no stopping and no slowing down until the end. For me, once was enough. I felt like I was going to die, and, uh, and I swore I would never get on it again. After riding the cyclone, Charles Lindbergh is reported to have said, a ride on a cyclone is a greater thrill than flying an airplane at top speed. Uh, this chap had lost his voice, and he'd gone from doctor to doctor to doctor, and nothing uh, helped. And a cousin of his, who lived in Brooklyn, took him down to ride the cyclone. And when he finished riding the cyclone, at the end of the ride, he said, I feel sick. The voice was back. The coaster takes six van turns and nine drops, including a first plunge of about 90 feet at a speed of 60 miles an hour. All sorts of things are left behind. At the end of the day, we find wigs, hats, sometimes false teeth. We found an artificial finger once. The wood construction means no two rides are ever quite the same. It bends, shakes, and creaks just a little bit differently each time. Oh, the wooden ones are by far the best. The higher I bounce, the better I like it. Sometimes you almost stand up. <laughs> The obsession with roller coasters dates back to the days of Tsarist Russia in the 16th century. The Tsarina had ice slides built for her children and then for her subjects. But they enjoyed them so much they decided they would try it in the summertime and made uh, hills out of wood and put rollers on their sleds. The French soon followed with their own elaborate version. Across the Atlantic, railway coal cars were turned into joy rides. A savvy Philadelphia Sunday school teacher put the cars on wheels and opened the switchback railway at Coney Island in 1884. An operator pushed a 10-person car to the top of the track, let go, and passengers sped down over 450 feet at six miles an hour. At five cents a ride, it proved to be a very profitable venture for its inventor. His ride made $600 a day. He became a very wealthy man. By the 1920s, there were almost 2,000 roller coasters across America. Every major city had one. Couples met, courted, and were married on them. They said their vows at the top of the lift hill, and when they said, I do, they plunged right into it. <laughs> But the Depression and World War II brought hard times for amusement parks and their rides. Coasters forgotten and neglected were no longer considered safe. Only a few remained. But with the 70s came a roller coaster renaissance. Theme parks drew large crowds. New, improved technology meant bigger, faster, safer coasters. Computers were used to design, control, and drive the rides. Strong steel frames offered smooth, sleek rides in endless configurations. The Anaconda opened in Virginia in 1991. It took 19 months and $5 million to build the 2,700-foot track, every foot of it monitored by a computer. The Anaconda dives into a tunnel underwater, which no other looping coaster in the world does. It also does six corkscrews in less than 50 seconds and a butterfly loop. It takes you up 130 feet and drops you down a 144-foot plunge. All 
of this is possible because of today's individual restraint systems. Number 296 for me, you know. It was fun, but my poor ears, they hurt. But for many, for the best in cheap thrills and sheer terror, there is nothing quite like the creaking and clanking of those old planks at Coney Island's Cyclone. The feeling for this roller coaster is hard to explain. It's something that you uh, get out of it that you don't get out of any other roller coaster that you go on. It's nothing like riding. It's nice to know that all the high tech in the world can't always make things better, even cheap thrills. We hope the cyclone at Astroland Park at Coney Island will be around a long time. At Phillips Petroleum, we sponsor a high school honor society that promotes the art of debate and speech making called the National Forensic League. In this program, many things are debated. What's not, however, is the positive effect it's having on the lives of young people. That's what it means to be the performance company. Mix nuts never give you enough of your favorite nuts, but new Fisher favorites are all favorites. Pecans, almonds, peanuts lightly coated with luscious flavors. Toffee, honey glaze, praline, plus large whole cashews. So that's my favorite. No, that's my favorite. Every nut is your favorite. New Fisher favorites. Fisher. Once, the elements united, and a world was born. Witness a baffling evolution, the making of a continent. Wednesday at 8 Eastern and Pacific, only on the Discovery Channel. Real Selection. Back to school begins with great shoes. And at Lead Shoe Store, you'll find the hottest new fashions at great prices. Hurry in. For great shoes, lead shoes. Real value. Join the Real Value Club and you could win $500 a day. Dynamite discounts and store specials. Real close. Highway 78 and I-5 Carlsbad. Plaza Camino Real. Why San Marcos Car Wash? There's no brushes, it's hand wash, and it's attention to detail. They really take care of you here. With their technique, they don't scratch the car. And they hand wash and they don't use any harsh chemicals. It's a great car wash for the money. Can't beat it. San Marcos Car Wash will hand wash your car, vacuum, clean the windows inside and out, and towel dry for only $4.99. Check out this month's special. Pamper your car at San Marcos Car Wash, your North County full-service hand wash. It's so much a part of our lives, we now take it for granted. We even have cameras we can use and throw away. We have come a long way from this dry plate view camera patented in 1886. Back then, this was revolutionary. It replaced the fussy, exacting wet plate camera and made today's snapshots practical. Lenses have changed, too, from the pinpoint in the piece of cardboard to the precision wide-angle lens in this piece of cardboard. Our story is about a revolutionary new lens. We see something, and our brains interpret the information, and then we act accordingly. By and large, our actions are limited by what we see in front of us. At least that was the case before Professor Grigas Powell invented a revolutionary new lens. The professor looks like a TV newsman out to interview people on the street. But this is a Hungarian trade fair in Budapest, and Professor Powell and his 360-degree lens are the star attractions. In simple terms, the picture you see from the Powell lens is what you would see if you had eyes in the front, back, and sides of your head after the image is flattened. It's totally accurate. Only if there is one thing, the left side of the picture and the right side of the picture are the same points. You know, you had it around you, the picture, you flatten it out, then this is also here back, and this is also back here. They are the same points. 
The lens has several practical applications using a technique called radio profilometry, shown in this laboratory test film. It makes it possible to take exact measurements of tubes and piping to check welds and wear, as well as to scope out imperfections in objects like propeller blades. A miniature version only six millimeters across has a lot of possibilities in the medical field because the lens can produce a completely undistorted 360 degree view of its surroundings. Rigas Powell's lens has attracted interest from NASA, which could use it to detect minute faults inside rocket motors and provide visual information for ground-based guidance systems on distant planets. The human eye only samples light entering through the iris and falling on the retina behind the lens. But Professor Powell's lens accepts light from all around its spherical exterior. The light is then reflected inside through a single focusing lens to the film behind. His inspiration came from the visual systems of the humble scallop and a firm belief that scientists and inventors should not live in boxes. I am the best physicist among the biologists. I am the best biologist among the mathematicians. I am the best mathematician among the engineers, and so on. And my friends tell, no, you are the worst physicist belong the physicists, the worst biologist among the biologists, and so on. I am working on, uh, on the crossroad of various sciences, if you can call it science. There are several other inventions that can produce similar images, but none of them is as simple or precise as Powell's patented creation. It can also be very useful in the field of architecture because it can measure the lighting and color effects on buildings in real time, and the aesthetic or artistic options are virtually limitless. Back at the trade fair, there is general agreement that the not-so-humble professor is on to something quite extraordinary. The scientific and industrial applications of that lens are fairly obvious, and it makes a pretty good conversation piece. But it's not the most ideal snapshot lens ever made, unless you're planning on taking pictures in a funhouse. Coming up next, virtual audio on Next Step. It's a car. It's also a Volkswagen. So it comes from a belief that driving is passion, that a car isn't two tons of heartless steel and high technology, but a friend. The new V6 Passat Touring Sedan. Now at special lease rates at your Volkswagen retailer. If you demand more from an aftershave than that same old alcohol burn, I try a brand new aftershave. New sensitive from Old Spice. It's alcohol free because alcohol burns. That's why they took it out and put these new cooling sensates in for real refreshment to go with that great scent. It's proof aftershave doesn't have to hurt to work. So use new sensitive and you might get burned. Take the heat out of aftershave. Demand proof. Try new alcohol free sensitive from Old Spice. He said I reminded him of vanilla. Vanilla, I said. He said, not the boring, so why bother vanilla? Real vanilla. Briar's vanilla. The vanilla so potent you can find it in the dark. The vanilla with depth, dimension. He said I reminded him of that vanilla. Briar's vanilla. And I said, why, thank you. Pure, true Briar's ice cream. The difference is real. Taste the difference in our tempting frozen yogurt flavors. To survive in the wild, you don't follow the rules, you make them. Join host Anthony Hopkins for the U.S. television premiere of Killing for a Living. Premiering tonight at 10 Eastern and Pacific, only on the Discovery Channel. It's time again for the ever-ready, everlasting popular science. Those motion pictures of optimism from the past. The invention, polarized cellulose film. science presents the newest invention for controlling light. Polaroid, a thin cellulose film in every inch of which are embedded billions of mineral crystals. 
As these crystals lie parallel, they form tiny apertures so that rays of light passing through the film are flattened and directed. Used in automobile windshields and headlights, it gives each driver full benefit of his own light and protects him from the blinding glare of approaching cars, affording increased safety for night driving. The new medium is also used to reveal defects in industrial materials, particularly glassware and textiles. A colorless piece of cellophane held in the projected rays of polarized light produces many shades of color. When the cellophane is crumpled, color variations increase, the rays being reflected from many different angles. This is further illustrated by placing a cellophane disc bearing additional cutout designs between two Polaroid sheets, one of which is rotated, producing change in density and color as if by magic. Just as a comb straightens each strand of hair, so Polaroid guides each ray of light. Pavement glare and other annoying brilliance disappears when highway traffic is observed through lenses that polarize light. Blinding glare is eliminated. Objects are clearly defined. Accidents are curtailed. Window shades may disappear entirely to be supplanted by Polaroid with its embedded crystals that comb the light, spreading its rays where needed. The interior appointments of luxurious streamliners provide for controlled lighting. Passengers simply turn a handle, admitting or excluding light at will. Light is one of man's most prized possessions. It's efficient control, a most popular science. Polarized sunglasses caught on all right, but polarized windshields, headlights, and train windows never did catch on because they cost too much. You can find some polarized windows in expensive cars and corporate jets, in computer screens, and liquid crystal displays. And that's our display for now. Hope you enjoyed it. For Invention, I'm Lucky Severson. Coming up next, the newest sound, virtual audio, the next stage in musical creativity on Next Step. Then, with cunning and skill, animals work together to snare their prey on killing for a living. Invention is sponsored by Volkswagen. It's a car. It's also a Volkswagen. So it comes from a belief that driving is passion, that a car isn't two tons of heartless steel and high technology, but a friend. The new V6 Passat Touring Sedan. Now, at special lease rates at your Volkswagen retailer. Sunday, a disturbed image, a frightening ideal. Thousands of mentally disabled people portrayed as monsters, dehumanized, and murdered. Examine the propaganda used to justify their deaths. The killing films of the Third Reich. Then, he was known as the Angel of Death. But did he escape justice, or have we finally found Joseph Mengele? Sunday, beginning at 9 Eastern and Pacific on Discovery Sunday. This fall on Cable's new learning channel. Sir Thomas Mallory's La Mort d'Arthur. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Darwin's The Origin of Species. Now, for the first time, trace the history and development of literature's most influential masterpieces in an incredible new series. Don't miss three back-to-back -back episodes and the world premiere presentation of Great Books. Wednesday, September 8th on Cable's new Learning Channel.
Have you ever looked at the new commercials, movies, and music videos like Terminator 2 or Michael Jackson's Black and White and asked how they do that? The next step toward total musical creativity is not a musical instrument at all, but a musical workstation. Kevin Reeds is navigating, but that's no sextant in his hand. It's his personal battery-operated GPS receiver. GPS, or Global Positioning System, was launched as a military project. I'm Richard Hart. Welcome to the next step in technology. Whoa. For more than 150 years, 3D has been something we uh, use to amuse ourselves. Purely entertainment. But now with the advent of computer-created 3D images, doctors, pilots, and others are finding out you don't even need special glasses to make use of this technology. Have you ever looked at the new commercials, movies, and music videos like Terminator 2 or Michael Jackson's Black and White and ask how they do that? Many of the effects in Terminator 2 and Michael Jackson's Black or White owe their existence to what goes on here at California's Silicon Graphics, Inc. In rooms like this one, way cool dudes and dudettes work on the cutting edge of something called 3D imaging, which has important applications not just for entertainment, but in other parts of our lives. The idea of three-dimensional imaging is that you can program in an entire world in 3D and move around in it. Now your architect can show you what your house will look like room by room before it's built. Why is this man smiling? Oh, great. So we're going to use my mug as a demo? That's right, Richard. Back in the old days when we were dealing with images, we could only do it in two dimensions, as you can see here. Uh, but nowadays, with the power of three-dimensional graphics, we can display you interactively in three dimensions. Wow! I'm on a cube. I'm a cube dude. Yeah, but a way cool-looking cube dude. You'd say that again. What makes it more real is that it's not, not just that it's on a cube, but it's squishing around, sort of uh, a jello fellow. <laughs> and what we've done here is we've uh, modeled the Volkswagen Beetle, and we're looking at this image. And what we can do is place this in, in environments where we can reflect different images on the surface of the car. We can see a garden being reflected in the surface of the car. Oh, yeah, it's like it's in a garden. All right, and then with one click of the mouse... <laughs> there he is again. Just can't get rid of that face. Okay, what are you going to do with me this time? Well, what we have now are two images, one of you and another of a robot. So here you see the robot, and here's the image of you. And what we're going to do is we're going to morph you. So what morph. that means, that's a process called morphing, which will transform your image into the robot's image. There and it here goes. Here we go. Wow, scary. Though cute. <laughs> An amazing likeness. Now, this is what they did for Terminator, right? That's right. This was used in movies like Terminator 2. In Terminator 2, special effects animators at Industrial Light and Magic used morphing and other 3D technology to make the Terminator turn into other objects. Essentially, it's a digital stunt double for Robert Patrick. You know, he, Robert can't walk out of fire and he can't pass his head through bars like Jello. So that's where we came in. This strip of film is about one second on the screen. 24 little frames. Now what they do here at ILM is tell the computer what the first picture is and the last one, and with a little help from professional animators, the computer figures out what goes in between. It allows an individual such a broad spectrum of capabilities. You have an animation studio, you have a design studio, you have a, a, a drawing studio, um, and, a, and, and, a, and a painting studio on one box. 3D imaging taken to the extreme is virtual reality. This is where you put on goggles and actually feel as though you're moving around in a computer-generated environment. Virtual reality was used to train bobsledders for the Winter Olympics and soldiers for Desert Storm. In the future, researchers think we'll be using 3D imaging in everyday life, from interactive textbooks that allow students to really take a look at history, to three-dimensional memos that will let you show co-workers what it is you're talking about. Doctors will probably be able to consult with each other over the phone about difficult cases. Advertising executives could show clients their ideas for commercials. And you may even be able to recreate a traffic accident for a jury, all in 3D. One thing's for sure, what started as entertainment is going to end up a very important tool. Wow! 
The kind of morphing you see in motion pictures and Michael Jackson videos these days doesn't have to be limited to professionals. You and I finally can do our own amateur version at home with this new program. Watch this little girl. Good heaven, she's turning into her dog. The program costs about $50, runs on PCs and Macs, and comes from a company called Griffin Software. You scan in an ending photo and a beginning photo, and it figures out what goes in between. Ever wonder what would have happened if Arsenio Hall had gotten the job to host The Tonight Show? Next up, a one-man orchestra. The Mississippi River, Wednesday on the Making of a Continent. Some people think putting a spa in their own backyard is a real nightmare. But not with a Hot Spring Portable Spa. It's ready to use right away. And Hot Spring is the number one selling brand in America. Backed by a five-year limited warranty. So relax all year long. Call 1-800-766-4SPA. Or check your yellow pages. Hot Spring, where America goes to relax. You see me. Glasses that lighten and darken automatically. So had infinity. That's why the rear view mirror in the new Q45 uses electrochromic technology to lighten and darken automatically for glare during night driving. So you don't have to think about it. Visit your infinity showroom. And when you're ready to buy a luxury car, you won't have to think about that either. Lease one of the world's most advanced automobiles, now at a very special rate for a limited time. Power. Stealth. Cunning. To survive in the wild, you don't follow the rules. You make them. Join host Anthony Hopkins as he guides you through a savage world where death is a way of life. Don't miss the U.S. television premiere of Killing for a Living. Premiering tonight at 10 Eastern and Pacific, only on the Discovery Channel. This is virtual audio. Fully orchestrated, move and pace inside the machine. Play along with it. The next step toward total musical creativity is not a musical instrument at all, but a musical workstation. The Korg 01W series of computer-enhanced keyboards allows the user to explore uncharted sonic waters. Virtual audio allows you to fly through any environment sonically now. Just like the computers allow you to fly through any environment visually, this is the emotional counterpart to the visuals. With touch, you can completely change everything. If you hit it very softly, you get this. As you hit it harder, same keys. A more graphic example is this orchestral patch. It's a combination of sounds. If you hit one note at this volume, you can make it get louder, but if you hit it twice as hard, you get the whole thing happening. What that means is, Immediately, intuitively, you can play the full orchestra. Composer Scott Singer, one of the first musicians to utilize the Korg's abilities, originates scores for television, movies, and multimedia presentations. The next step composer needs to think about each finger being a different instrument now. So let's say you want to go out sonically in your mind's eye to uh, the jungles. As you play the keys harder, you get the crickets. So you're, cre you're creating, a, you're doing two things at once now. You're playing music but you're also playing in an environment. Environment shaping now allows the composer to completely paint melodic scapes. Everything from each musical instrument and each percussion instrument to the wind in the trees and the waves on the beach. There are 
119 percussion and 255 multi-sounds in the Korg's huge 48 megabit computer memory. Read and write optical discs can store the music for 10 entire symphonies. And Scott says if classical composers had had this new virtual audio technology, they'd have been able to hear full orchestration as they composed. down there, got the horns up there, got the strings and the woodwinds, you'd sink into it, it was wartime, it was jamming, everything in jamming is nice and thick, you'd have a blast. It used to be that it took all these keyboards, this mixing console, FM digital synthesis, here's a drum machine over here, here's a sampler over here, here's a full rack of analog digital oscillators, synthesizers and everything. This whole thing, and a computer, is in the one box. But don't think that just by adding the Korg O1W to your home entertainment center, you're going to create your own evening at Pops. You still have to be able to play, and play pretty well. But if you do have some ability, some basic skills, and the $3,500 admission fee, you can become the phantom of your own opera. a player piano is a computer. If you look at a player piano roll, these little holes signify bits and bytes of yes-no information. Same kind is found on a computer disc. That's why there's an effort underway to transfer every performance recorded on one of these onto one of these. Philip Auberg is accompanying himself on the piano. This computerized keyboard is playing back what he recorded earlier. Performers Barbara Higby and Phil Auberg have just made their first recordings direct to disc. Not compact, a computer disc that's played back on a disc clavier, a high-tech player piano. Player pianos powered by punched paper were popular until 1940. George Gershwin himself sat down to record this role. Paderewski did another. If you think of this as one long punch card, it is a primitive computer. This is the next step in piano rolls, a computer disc. This Gershwin performance has been transferred to this disc. It's a whole new specialized field. And in fact, many artists today who would have recorded on one of these in an earlier time are now directly recording to these. Every time you push a note, a digital message is sent. As music evangelist Gary Leuenberger hears it, the electronic player piano replays the performer far more faithfully. Just playing it back is important to me because that's my piece of music. I could actually transpose it, let's say four keys up. I can create my own accompaniment. Here we go. Sing along. I'll slow the tempo down by, let's say, uh, 30%. The disc clavier can write your music. You can just be improvising and playing it into a floppy disk and then, then see exactly what you were doing rather than having to do the painstaking process of writing it down while you play. Philip Auberg envisions one day having the ghost of the artist sitting there in your living room too as holograms. Of, you know, you plug in the disc and you got some, you got me sitting at the bench. I'm sure that's going to happen.
travel arranged through Continental. One airline can make a difference. A first-class seat for the price of full coach. That's the difference on Continental. You're watching the Discovery Channel. In the Gulf of Mexico, Phillips Petroleum was one of the first companies to create artificial reefs from its oil rigs. It's something that's attracted hundreds of species of fish while helping to protect the livelihood of a rare breed of man. That's what it means to be a performance company. When I decided to fix my porch myself, I couldn't quite believe it. So, who comes to the rescue? Well, handy he's not. And since when did you get all this energy? Ever since you got me started on breakfast with grape nuts. It's like you said, this box is full of great mornings. Well, look, it's right here. Fat-free, natural energy source. I said try it a few mornings. And I did. And it does help keep me going. You know, Dad, I think I have inherited your handiness. Yeah, I think you inherited my toolkit. That's what he's got. Post grape nut cereal helps keep you going strong all morning long. Now you can take an exotic vacation and leave your bags behind. Escape to the San Diego Wild Animal Park. Get away to Africa and Asia, where rare and endangered animals run free. Walk through tropical rainforests. Come, vacation with the natives and get a touch of the exotic or the entertaining. Leave your bags at home. Escape to the Wild Animal Park. Wednesday only, September 1st, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., 11 hours only, the D.O.W. Dow. 11-hour sale. On sale, Bose high-performance speakers, just $47 each. Kenwood's in-dash digital auto reverse AM FM stereo for the car with cassette. Super sale priced at $138. Take your choice, the Sanyo or GE VHS remote control VCR. Sale price $168. RC's fabulous remote control 20-inch XL100 color TV. Sale priced only $198 now at the giant D.O.W. Dow. Before the end of this decade, you will be able to put into your purse or pocket an electronic map that knows where it is by using satellite signals. Pilots and sailors are already using them. The satellites were put there for U.S. military applications, but there is no reason in the meantime why the rest of us can't hitch a ride. GPS, or Global Positioning System, was launched as a military project to set up a network of satellites around the globe. It would allow anyone with a GPS receiver to know exactly where he or she was with astonishing accuracy. Using signals from as many as eight satellites, a military GPS receiver can instantaneously calculate its position, day or night, rain or shine, to within a few feet. The next three lines show the position in three dimensions, the latitude, longitude, and the altitude above sea level. The GPS locator system reportedly worked so well during the Gulf War that receiver manufacturers were flooded by letters from Desert Storm veterans who witnessed the marvelous precision firsthand and now wanted one for themselves. And there are GPS receivers for sailors and pilots and drivers. But there's also a catch. The Pentagon has indicated that it would like to limit the accuracy of non-military units so that a civilian would know his position only plus or minus the length of a football field. The GPS industry is lobbying hard, saying the cat's already out of the bag, and besides, the satellites are already up there. Why not let everybody enjoy pinpoint locational accuracy? I got one on the right. Today, you can already find GPS everywhere, from locating homes destroyed by fire to a system for guiding oil tankers into port, and another to watch over the Houston, Texas bus system. This crew in San Francisco is using GPS to measure the exact location of the Golden Gate Bridge, so they'll know whether it's moved from that position and possibly become unsafe after a major earthquake. And individuals, too, are using GPS. Kevin Reeds is navigating, but that's no sextant in his hand. It's his personal battery-operated GPS receiver, which fits in his hand and weighs less than a pound. At least four companies are selling personal navigation receivers, all American except for Sony, which offers a circular antenna which can be mounted on a roof. But that makes it awkward and tough to put in your pocket. Trimble makes a unit so small it can be used with one hand, and the company is currently working on a receiver the size of a watch. 
Perhaps the first place most of us will actually use GPS is here, in our cars, to help us find our way. This is one example, the Navmate from a Japanese company called Zexel. By touching a color TV screen, you program a destination, the golf course, a hospital, or just a street address, and in seconds, the Navmate calculates how to get you there. All you do is follow the arrows and street names on the screen. And not just left or right. The screen indicates U-turns and slight turns, too. The computer also won't let you turn the wrong way into a one-way street or make a U-turn where it's against the law. It knows. On the roof is the satellite receiver. In the wheels and body are sensors. In the trunk is the actual computer that contains all the street data for hundreds of miles around. There's now even a GPS-based system being designed which will figure out how to get around traffic jams. And notifies you, the driver, oh, there's a problem up ahead. And it'll then give you the new route. The best part of GPS, we may never have to hold or even look at a road map again. Let's talk home theater for a moment. So you've got the surround sound Dolby with THX, you've got the audio system nailed, now you need a bigger picture. But you might also recall that the early projection televisions were kind of weak, frankly. The picture was not very bright, certainly not very sharp, not as sharp as this. But the next step takes care of that. Current technology, such as the sharp vision projector we're using here, project the light through three separate panels of liquid crystals, three different colors. That means a much sharper, brighter picture, almost as good as a real television. <laughs> but a real television with a tube can't give you a big picture. I mean, a really big picture. To increase the size of this one, you don't have to move the projector back. You just turn this built-in zoom lens. Now we're talking home theater. This unit weighs only about 25 pounds. In fact, comes with its own handle, so you can carry it from room to room. And the projection systems cost from $2,000 to about $6,500. For one-eighth the cost, might I recommend something that weighs only one one-hundredth as much. This television set is about an inch and a half thick but it has a four-inch color screen on it. This kind of liquid crystal technology will one day have us hanging televisions on the wall, like a moving work of art. But of course, for that to happen, the picture will have to get a little wider. There's no reason why a four-foot large flat panel TV couldn't be made in a laboratory today. The challenge for years to come will be mass producing such an item for consumers. Next up, the mythical print to fax a copy scanner. This portion of Discovery is sponsored in part by Michelin. It's not just a high-performance tire. It's a Michelin. So it does things ordinary tires just can't do. XGT series from Michigan. Because so much is riding on your tires. This symbol outside says inside you'll find a lasting commitment to performance. The Intel 486DX2 processor. Power for today's hottest software. And the Intel Pentium processor. For the next generation of compatible power. Intel, the computer inside. This is the Infinity J30. Oh, and this is the clock in the J. There's an interesting reason it looks like it does. Infinity realized the clock is the one instrument in the car everyone uses. So they felt it should stand out. Now, if they put that much thought into the clock, imagine the other thoughtful extremes they went to. Visit your Infinity showroom. Oh, tell them you already know the part about the clock. Lease one of the world's most advanced automobiles, now at a very special rate for a limited time. To survive in the wild, you don't follow the rules, you make them. Join host Anthony Hopkins for the U.S. television premiere of Killing for a Living. Premiering tonight at 10 Eastern and Pacific, only on the Discovery Channel. Why is it we have so many different machines to do the same thing? For example, I've just written this wonderful idea in a computer. I found a great picture in a magazine that goes along with it. I can put the two together by scanning the picture into the computer on this machine called a scanner. And then printing everything out on a completely different machine called a laser printer. 
all well and good. If I want to fax this to someone, I can do that easily enough with a fax machine, which is kind of like a scanner and a printer. But the magazine article is quite another matter. This I have to copy. In fact, if I want more than one of any of these, I have to go to the copy machine. It turns out that the technology for scanning, for printing, and for duplicating is the same. So why can't you have one machine that does it all? Critics have said the reason we haven't seen an all-in-one box sooner is because the companies make more money off of us, selling us a fax machine and a copy machine and a printer. But what's more likely is that traditional business divisions prevented it, a computer division, a fax division, and so on, neither one of them wanting the other guy to make it all. Okie Data finally broke away from the pack and did it. This is a fax machine, a copy machine, a scanner, and a computer laser printer all in one box. Now, if it made coffee, this baby would sell. Until recently, if you wanted to do anything more than read a fax, you had to have somebody retype all the information into a computer. Well, now, fortunately, we have new computer programs that allow a PC to receive a fax, make changes to it, and send it off again without ever printing it out. That's right, just when you get your first plain paper fax machine, they take paper out of the process. Until the next next step, I'm Richard Hart. Thank you for joining us.